Yo, gang, gang, gang. What's up? It's Trollbot.exe, and I'm back. But now, with a new series called The Hall of Menaces. This is a series dedicated to the menaces, the savages, the ones with black Air Force activity. And by the end of this video, you will agree with me that Back Dimensional Count Radigat is a certified menace. Like, this man was doing some of the craziest stuff. Like, he wanted the smoke 24 7. And now he stands before the podium to be judged and to see if he can become the first member in this sorority of gods. See what I did there by mixing fraternity and sorority together? So, let the trial commence! Just a second before the actual trial commences, we'll be splitting it into Exhibit A and Exhibit B like CJ the Champ does. CJ the Champ being the reason why this series is even a thing. So, Exhibit A will cover from the beginning all the way up until the formation of Great Icarus, and Exhibit B will start off from that all the way to his demise. So, let's begin. <laughs> Alright, let's start off. We see this very happy couple working for the Sky Force, which is essentially a futuristic version of the Air Force, and also they have a spaceship orbiting the Earth. As they finish a mission, they return to base. That is until Radigat announces his presence by broadcasting himself all over the world, calling himself a god, and announcing that he'll be taking over Earth. So then, his ship appears, and the energy from it destroys the Sky Force base. Oh, and the happy couple, Ryu and Rie, are separated, with Radigat doing one of the most heinous things you can do to another man. This man Radigat stole his girl! Like, not only did Radigat steal Ryu's girl, he also brainwashed her and transformed her into Maria, a Viram executive. Viram being the group that Radigat's part of. Just imagine if you're hanging out with your girl, happy as can be, and then your op comes and takes away your girl. Like, dude! Anyway, since this is a toku, the series the characters are part of, Jetman, is kind of episodic. But there are some episodes where Radigat gets on demon time. And while he hasn't done nobly that much menace activity, the stuff he does just especially later in the series. So we get to episode 6, and everybody is fighting House Dimension, which is a monster that literally is an apartment complex. So Radigat and Ryu are facing off one-on-one -on -one like it's a basketball match, and they're both inside House Dimension. So Ryu is getting the upper hand and actually manages to cause Radigat to bleed, and Radigat is like, oh no, nah. oh no you did not just do that. So he transforms into Radigan, and oh my gosh, can somebody please get this off my screen? Get this thing off my screen! And Radigan begins running Ryu's fade. Ryu's like, go for backup, go for backup! And then Guy flies in and saves him. So, as you can tell, Radigan refuses to take an L. Then we get to episode 17, and a meteor crashes. And all of a sudden, Radigan feels an electrical surge, causing him pain, and Radigan's like, who could possess such energy? And it turns out it's his boss, Empress Juza. And the Virum, with the exception of Maria since she doesn't know who Juza is, are like, oh my god, why is she back? So Radigat tries a one-man uprising, but then Juza turns into her demon beast form and sends Radigat down to Earth as a human with no memories. But before then, she reveals that she has the egg, which is going to hatch into Semimaru, a giant monster capable of destroying the Earth. Eradicate, he wanted the egg for himself, so that's why he led the uprising, but he got caught lacking. So, while he's an amnesiac human, he gets found by this girl named Saki, who takes care of him. Now, Saki is terminally ill, and Radigate and Saki actually hang out together. Meanwhile, Juza is turning people into crystals. And the Jetmen actually face Juza, and she ran their fades. Meanwhile, when Saki is about to die, Radigat heals her. So they continue to hang out until they stumble upon the Jetmen's battle with Juza. And that's when Radigat regains his memories. He also transforms back into his original form. 
After they jump Juza with the rest of the Viren joining in, Juza lies down defeated, and Radigan is looming over her and then throws his sword into her neck, killing her. And after that, Radigan is confronted by Saki, telling him to turn good again. Like he said, girl, who do you think I am? And just outright kills her. No, 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 just sit down, buddy. Sit down. Sit down at the round table. Get real comfortable. This man saved the girl's life just to kill her later on. <laughs> well, after that debacle, Semamaru eventually hatches in episode 22. Actually, it was way at the end. And in the next episode, Semamaru begins wrecking house. And can somebody tell me why he makes this goofy noise while he walks? Just listen to this. Why are there bells jingling like he's Santa Claus? Like, anyway. So the Jetmen face off against Semimaru in their mech, the Jet Icarus. And they proceed to get molly whopped. Until another mech, the bird slash Jet Garuda, manages to freeze him for a short time and is piloted by warriors from the back dimension, led by a guy named Ray, who tells everybody that Semimaru can never break free from the ice. Seconds later, Semimaru breaks free. Everyone decides to fuse the two mechs together into Great Icarus, and all eight of them were supposed to pilot it, but Radigid had other plans, as Radigid personally smoked all three of them, with the third teammate, Dan, actually putting up a fight. But he failed to prevent the fusion, and Great Icarus was formed, and Semimaru got his fade ran. Now, Exhibit B. So while Radigate is made fun of by Maria and Tran, Tran is going to be very important later. More specifically, they're making fun of him after Semimaru got caught lacking, and by extension Radigate, since Radigate was the one that released Semimaru. So this man Radigan decides to harness the powers of the dead and take the Jetman's souls. And then he forces Ryu to rescue them from the underworld. And the Jetmen are being tortured by past enemies which they already killed. Or specifically, Paper Dimension, Noodle Dimension, Faucet Dimension, and Diamond Dimension. And Radigan would have succeeded if not for the power of Plot Armor. So then a couple of episodes later, this demon named Mu is trying to resurrect his masters, Raymond and Gorg, both of which have been sealed away for centuries. And the only way to do that is with the warrior's blood. So this man Mu started running fade after fade after fade. From samurai to boxers, this man just wanted the smoke. Eventually two of the jetmen, Guy and Kaori, are being held captive. This guy offering up his blood in order to save her. Then Radigan shows up and offers up his own blood, successfully releasing Raymond and Gorg. So after Gorg is defeated, Radigan shows up with a biodimensional bug in his hand. So he sneakily places it into Gorg's body for Raymond to find. And Raymond is attempting to fuse with Gorg. And Radigan is only going to allow them to fuse if they serve under him. So after Radigan sneakily places a biodimensional bug inside Gorg, Raymond fuses with Gorg, and multiple dimensional bugs start to appear and Raymond gets mutated. And now, Radigan is controlling demons. But even with that addition, Raymond still gets popped. Then episode 36 comes around, and at the end, while everybody is bullying Tran for being a child, Tran runs to the cave and gets so angry that he forces himself to go through puberty. And he reaches his adult form, Tranza. And Tranza starts running fades. And he takes control of Virum. Episode 45 rolls around, and the Jetmen are being beaten down by Tran's ultimate weapon, Veronica, a giant robot. As the old saying goes, fight Megazord with Megazord. Okay, so it's being run by the life energy of humans. And Radigat ends up being caught inside the machine and Veronica attempts to absorb Radigat. But Radigat decides to go inside the machine and absorb all of Veronica's power, effectively rendering it useless and allowing the Jetman to defeat the robot. More accurately, destroy it. Two episodes later, Radigan assumes his human form and helps Ryu face off against Emperor Tranza. 
and what he does to Tarantula is just outlandish. He first stabs Mans and makes him bow under him, and then Raggett just leaves him to rot, and we see later that Tarantula is a patient at a mental hospital, has completely lost any mental ability. Yeah, Radigate broke this guy's mind. I would have probably sat him down for this, but he's already sat down, so. And in the next episode, it doesn't get much better, with Radigate infecting Maria with his blood after promising to make her stronger. So Radigate basically turned her into a vampire. And look how he explains this nonchalantly to Grey. Oh, and he also unlocked the kaiju form. And in his new kaiju form, Raygwem, Radigate smoked the Jetman. Like, he smoked him like he was cooking filet mignon. And after Maria is cured, Radigate's now back to his regular form, Radigate just kills her! And in front of her, man! And this just set Ryu off. So, during the final battle, Radigate unleashes his true power as Raygwem. And after destroying the Jetman, he decides to fuse with the Vyrock base, giving him armor. But in the end, the Jetman figure out his weakness, which was his back, and the ultimate menace was slain, fitting for an absolute beast. Yeah, this man passed his test. From stealing the main hero's girl, to awakening and mind-controlling demons, to breaking someone's mind. Yeah, just sit this man down. Sit this man down! Okay then, catch you in the next video. Later fools. I'm just a